of the landmarks for the Greater Palatine. Very important here because uh, we're operating toward the posterior portion of the oral cavity, which oftentimes can lead to initiation of a gag reflex. <laughs> Nevertheless, we do have to dry the area and do some palpation with a cotton tip applicator to find that area. So, first of all, we need to, uh, an alternative to using a cotton 2x2 two two is to use your air, which unfortunately sometimes initiates a gag reflex also. At any rate, we need to get that area as dry as we can. Once we get that dry, we use a dry cotton tip applicator. We'll start approximately in the area of the premolars, where the hard palate is, about halfway between the, the gingival crest and a midline in the palate, we'll start to go posteriorly with our tube or our cotton tip applicator. Approximately in the area of the, in approximately between the first and second molar, you will start to feel the area of the soft palate. Immediately underneath this area where you can start to feel the tissue give, this is the approximate area of the border between the hard palate and the soft palate. At this point, underneath the tissue, is the foramen of the greater palatine nerve. So again, start about at the area of the premolars, go back, you will continue to feel the hard palate, and then at some point you will feel that tissue give, and you will actually see that tissue give. This is precisely where you want to deposit the anesthetic. Having discovered this, you'll put your topical anesthetic there, let that sit for approximately a minute. After you remove the topical anesthetic, you need to dry the area again with a clean, dry cotton tip applicator. You will now put pressure just posterior to the area where you place the topical because this is the area where you'll put pressure as you simultaneously introduce the syringe, the needle, right into the area right above, right anterior to the greater palatine foramen. It's important that this be clean and dry because if it's wet or you attempt to use the same cotton tip applicator that you use for application of the topical, the moment you put pressure, you will slide back and right back into the posterior soft palate. This is the greater palatine nerve block. The nerves are the greater palatine nerve or the anterior palatine nerve. The areas anesthetized are the posterior portion of the hard palate and overlying soft tissues anteriorly as far as the first premolar and medially to the midline. The needle gauge in length is 25 or 27 short. The patient position is supine with their mouth wide open, neck extended, head turned to the left or the right for visibility. The operator position for the right side is 7 to 8 o'clock facing the patient. For the left side, it's 11 o'clock facing the same direction as the patient. The landmarks are the great palatine foramen, the junction of the maxillary alveolar process, the palatine bone, and the target area is the greater palatine nerve as it passes anteriorly between the soft tissues and the bone of the hard palate. The syringe position is opposite side of the mouth at a right angle to the target area. Soft tissue slightly anterior to the greater palatine foramen. The bevel orientation is towards the palatal soft tissues. The pressure anesthesia is yes, prior to and during the injection. The depth of insertion is less than 10 millimeters. The osseous contact, yes, but very gently. Contact. Aspiration potential is less than 1%. Negative aspiration. And the amount of solution is very slowly. Deposit not more than 0.5 millimeters or one-fourth to one-third of the cartridge.